Okay, so this last video is um, in this uh, s section, I guess, uh, is just sort of a catch-all and a, maybe almost a summary uh, kind of a video, and I mostly wanted to just do a couple more examples um, of some, I guess, more complicated problems um, that might use more than one rule. Um, and anyway, and also maybe just give you some overarching thoughts and strategies for how to approach these derivative questions. Um, so, uh, once for one last time, uh, of course, here's our chart, which is complete. Um, and uh, on the left, we have our shortcuts, our basic guys. Uh, and then on the right, we see the uh, rules that we spent the last uh, week or so uh, getting comfortable with, hopefully. Um, and most importantly, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule down there on the right, uh, which are really the three most important um, tools to help us be able to do the derivatives of pretty much anything. I mean, there's really not much that you could even write down, you know, even if you're just kind of making something up and be like, I don't know, let me put a cosine and a e to the x and a whatever, you know, it probably more or less falls into one of these uh, three rules. So um, anyway, so um, so th so these are our tools here. So um, just a general I guess strategy. So obviously, if you just have a basic um, uh, character, you know, that's on the left here, that's on the in the basic chart. Obviously, you just do that derivative, and you're all done. If you have, you know, the worst thing you'd have to do is maybe do a rewrite, right? So if you've got, uh, you know, square root of x, you know, the worst thing you have to do first is rewrite that as x to the one half. Okay, and then use rule number three. I guess it is. Is that what it is? Yeah, that rule. Um, in order to do the derivative, right? So there isn't much to say about the chart on the left, of course. Um, and if you know the derivative, and if what you see is one of those things, and that's it, you know, if it's, if it's just, uh, you know, what is the derivative of uh, tangent, or if that's what you need to know right now, uh, there, well, there it is. There's the derivative of tangent, secant squared. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, great. So that, that's, we've got those, but of course, in reality, I'm not going to ask you probably things that easy. It's going to involve these rules on the right. Um, the e first two rules are the easiest ones, and you don't really even have to think about them a whole heck of a lot if you have a coefficient in front of a, of a function, so some number. Um, okay, that's no biggie. Um, you just basically carry the coefficient over into the derivative, and then just do the derivative of the stuff that actually has x's in it, which hopefully you can do via uh, one of these other rules here. Um, <coughs> The addition and subtraction, that's literally no thinking at all. If you see a plus sign and you want to say, oh, I want the derivative of this thing plus that thing, okay, just do the derivative of each one separately and then add. So it's really very simple. You almost, again, don't really have to think about that one. Okay, it's three, four, five. It's the product quotient and chain rules that, uh, you know, we've got more work to do, I suppose. Um, the setup for the product rule and the chain rule are both pretty easy. The product rule, when will I use that? Um, let me do some different color here. <coughs> um, obviously, if I see uh, two functions multiplied together, one function times another function, that's the product rule. So if you see that and say, oh, okay, it's uh, cosine of x times uh, ln of x or whatever you've got, and say, all right, well, that's the product rule, so I should use this rule. And then I say, okay, so here's going to be my answer over here. Um, the nice th and, and ditto for the quotient rule. The quotient rule is pretty easy to spot because, well, there's a fraction involved, right? So if you see something on top of something, well, that's probably the quotient rule. Um, and then again, here's your answer over here on the right. And um, uh, okay, these are a little bit of labor, I suppose, right? That it's kind of a pain in the ass, and it is, um, to sort of write all this stuff out. But there's not a whole lot of I don't know, not a whole lot of mystery, I guess, and I, has, I always hesitate to say this, but it's not a whole lot that can go wrong um, when you're doing just the product or the quotient rule. Um, again, just because the setup is pretty much staring you in the face in terms of um, knowing what's f of x and what's g of x. Well, if you've got two things multiplied together, call one of them f of x and call the other one g of x. Um, Okay, and then ditto for a quotient. If you have a fraction, the top is f of x and the bottom is g of x, and, and then you're in business. Then just go right ahead. Um, 
So um, the chain rule, is, which is, was, was our most recent rule, um, is the one where it's, I think it's safe to say mo more, more things can go wrong in terms of the setup, right? So getting that, in other words, getting what you're looking at to look like this, namely that exact format, so to speak, requires you to say, okay, well, who's playing the role of F and who's playing the role of G? Now, that's a pretty easy question to answer in uh, the product rule or in the quotient rule because you just sort of look and see. Okay, for the chain rule, it's a little more difficult because you have to think a little bit harder about, okay, what is this, what, what does this mean? What does the setup for the chain rule mean? How do, I, how do I say, oh, okay, I made it look like the setup for the chain rule. Now I can use the result to get my answer. You have to make sure you're thinking about, well, all right, uh, this, the setup for the chain rule over here, says I'm looking for one function that then has a second function performed on it. In other words, you're sort of looking for two rounds of action. First thing that happens to x is that g happens. In other words, I do some function of x first. That's g. Then I do yet another thing to it. That's f. Okay, it's kind of like a one-two punch, I guess, right? That you first say, okay, first I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to, you know, take the sign of it, or whatever, whatever you've got. Um, and that's how you maybe is a nice way of sort of storytelling your way through, oh, okay, that's what the setup for the chain rule is. It's one function plugged into another function, or it's a inside function and an outside function, or it's a this is what I do first and this is what I do next um, type of a setup. Okay? And if you can do that, if you can correctly identify f and g for the chain rule, then this isn't really hard. I mean, it's just, again, it's just sort of you having to write out all the pieces and, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, so that's kind of the quick refresher, I guess, or one last round through explaining these rules, uh, which hopefully they make sense. Um, so, yes, so I wanted to just uh, pause oh, let me get rid of that, and just say, all right, so some, uh, just a couple of general pieces of advice beyond what I just said, and then I'll do a few examples for you. Um, <clears throat> So uh, just some sort of general advice on derivatives. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, just be careful. Um, that you recognize when rules are needed. I know that that's sort of not the best advice because what the hell does that mean? And, and, and or that's obvious, I guess, right? But, um, but what I mean by this is, t is to say, you know, it's kind of easy to either because you're not totally sure what you're doing or because, you know, you just sort of forget. It's easy to kind of look at something like, um, you know, x times uh, sine of x. And, you know, it's kind of easy to, like, jump all over that and say, oh, I know the derivative of x, that's 1, and the derivative of sine is cosine, and so the answer is cosine. And it's kind of easy to, you know, because, look, I mean, that took me, what, four seconds or so to, to do? Um, it, that's wrong, <laughs> um, but it's easy to kind of jump on something and be like, oh, yes, yes, okay, I'm done, yes, next problem you know, especially in a testing situation where you're kind of, you know, maybe r rushing a little bit. Um, so just remember, um, you, it is true that the derivative of x is 1, and it is true that the derivative of sine is cosine, but you'd first want to approach, look at the problem and say, okay, what is this that I'm looking at? I'm not just looking at sine, and I'm not just looking at x. So the fact that I know what the derivative of each one of those is nice, that's helpful maybe, but that's not the answer because I have to first recognize what, what is this? What is this thing? What is this function? What is this whole thing that I'm looking at? And the answer to that question is you would first say, oh, that's the product of two functions. It's the product of the x function and the sine function. So you'd first think to yourself in your brain, okay, that's a product. Ah. Okay, so if I'm going to do the derivative of a product of two things, I need the product rule. And then from there, you can roll right on through this one in about two or three minutes, I think, right? So 
Um, just, I don't know, right? It sounds like silly advice, but you'd be surprised how easy it is to kind of forget it. So, and maybe that's happened to you in some of the practice and homework that you've done already. But um, so to, you know, so sort of to be mindful of what, what is it that I'm looking at? And that should help maybe um, steer you in the right direction for what kind of rule you need. And again, not only recognize when you need rules, but also which rule. And again, I'll just say it one last time. The product, uh, the uh, quotient rule is pretty easy to pick out because it's a fraction. The product rule should be one function times another function, and the quotient and the uh, chain rule should look like one function plugged into. So it's rare that people pick the wrong thing, but I guess it can happen. So just be careful um, that you really convince yourself before you start doing a rule. Is this really it? Is this what I've really got? You know, and when you have something like sine x squared, it's important to recognize that this is not sine times x squared. So it's not the product rule. It's the x squared function plugged into the sine of x function. So it's a chain rule question. Okay, so, and again, right, I know math doesn't do us a whole lot of favors by sort of abusing notation in that parentheses uh, does mean multiply, okay, but in this context, right, it's sine of x squared. And so the parentheses there are not being used to say multiply as much as they are to just say that the x squared is being plugged into sine, right? So this is different than that, right? So that's the product rule. So this is the product rule. And this is the chain rule. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> right, so sine of x times x squared. Ah, that's the product rule. That's two functions multiplied together. Uh, the one on the left here is the x squared function plugged into the sine function. So that's a chain rule. Okay, so, um, all right, so I've said more than I needed to about that. Um, my only other piece of advice, uh, just sort of overarching, is um, after you sort of looked at the, at the uh, question and you know, had some thoughts about what rule um, you think you've, you're looking at, uh, when you, you may need more than one. So when you need more than one rule, Um, you should first choose a rule that encompasses the entire um, problem, or the entire question, you know, the entire thing you're looking at. And what I mean by that is that if you have something um, like, for example, uh, sine of uh, e to the x over x squared. <clears throat> um, when you see something like this, again, step number one is important, right? I'm going to look at it and try to say, well, what rule is this? Or what rule am I looking at here? And so when I study a problem like this, I'd say, okay, um, well, something jumps out at you, which of course is that you see a fraction. So, I mean, you are going to need the quotient rule. No, there's no question about that. But you may also look at this and say, oh, but that fraction is also then plugged into the sine function, mm -hmm. which that kind of hopefully sounds a little bit more like a chain rule. So hopefully in, in analyzing this for, you know, for 30 seconds, you think, this is probably a two rule problem. I need two rules to do this one. I need a chain rule to handle the sine of a function. And I need the quotient rule to deal with the what's in the parentheses there. That's a fraction, so I probably need the quotient rule. So it's tempting to, or, uh, and ho so hopefully you at least are seeing that much. But then of course the question is, well, what do I do first and you know, all that? And this can be confusing because if you choose the wrong thing first, it's not that it's necessarily wrong, it's just that you then I think more susceptible to kind of getting off track and maybe not quite being able to put all the pieces back together. So my advice to you in number two here, my second piece of advice, is to first, when you think you need more than one rule especially, even if you only need one rule, you should always pick whatever rule you write down first. It should use everything, and by that I mean every you know, piece of this question should be represented in my choice of F and G. 
Okay, so for the product rule or the quotient rule or the chain rule, you're always writing down, oh, what's f of x and what's g of x, right? That's what we always do. So um, when you need more than one rule or when you think you need more than one rule or even if you don't need more than one rule, um, whatever you write down as your first or only rule that you're going to use, it needs to use everything. If you don't, in all likelihood, you're going to never come back to the thing you neglected. In other words, the thing you left out you're probably going to just sort of try to <laughs> clumsily or awkwardly include it at the end or something like that. Uh, okay. um, what's also good about this is that it's going to enable you to kind of be a little bit naive in a good way in that when you, if you follow this advice of picking a rule that uses everything, then that second rule that you think you kind of see you also need to use somewhere, it will just happen sort of organically or naturally. In other words, whenever you need it, it will just come up. So I'll just at least get this set up while I'm here in the corner here uh, on the slide. So what would be the wrong thing to do first, I guess, would be to, to, to be overly concerned or overly thinking about, well, look, at that's a quotient. It's clearly a quotient. So I should be doing the quotient rule. And if I said that, and again, it's important to kind of maybe label, okay, this is about to be a quotient rule. And I say, oh, okay, well, the top is e to the x and the bottom is x squared. And in, indeed, I could do the quotient rule on, um, uh, with this, and it would tell me the derivative of this because, well, that's the quotient. But the problem is, is that I've completely neglected sign of, uh, the sign. So the reason why this is bad to do, or why I would almost call this wrong to do, is that, okay, if I do this quotient rule, I'm going to then have to be like, all right, well, what do I do about sign? And I'm just, it's very, ner <laughs> I get nervous <laughs> if I'm you all and are still learning this, that I'm going to probably do something like, I don't know, take the cosine because that's the derivative of sine and then call that my answer. Or I don't know, right? I'm worried I'm, that I might make stuff up. So, uh, so I don't think that choosing the quotient rule first would be the best idea. And the reason, again, being that when I look, okay, I use those two things, but I completely neglected sine. So that kind of violates this rule number two here, which is to say I probably shouldn't just pick a rule first that doesn't use everything. So I don't think I want to pick the quotient rule first because it neglects, the, it, it completely ignores sign. So, I mean, well, the other rule I thought I was going to need to use is a chain rule because it looks like one function uh, plugged into another function, just like up here. Um, so I said, all right, well, let's, let's do that. So if I was going to proceed as if this was the chain rule, I would ask, okay, so I'm plugging something into something else. And this one sets up pretty nicely, right? I mean, hopefully it looks like I'm plugging that into that. Right, again, just like this one up here. <clears throat> it's no different except that the inside function, the g of x, is a little more complicated, right? But you'd, you wouldn't disagree with me, right, that the chain rule, which asks that you write down one function, g, that's then being plugged into another function, f, that's exactly what I've got here. Now notice, this uses everything. Look, everybody's here. I've got sine, yes. I've got e to the x, and I've got x squared, yes, yes. So I've got everybody, which makes me happy, or at least it makes... <laughs> If it makes following this rule that or, or suggestion that I wrote down here that satisfies that. I just say, all right, well, if I'm going to do the chain rule, I need to know the derivative of each of these characters. Well, that's an easy one. That's in the chart. But then I'd say, all right, and I need to know the derivative of g. Oh, well, here now is where we'd say, oh, well, that g is a quotient. It's a fraction. Aha. Uh -huh. So I would maybe say to myself, pause. I need to go off to the side, and I need to do the quotient rule on e to the x over x squared. OK, because I do, right? I need to know what's the derivative of this guy. And so I say, all right, well, that's a quotient. So I need the quotient rule. So you're going to have to go off to the side and kind of do a side problem, and then maybe bring your answer back here. And then remember that you need to put together the pieces of the chain rule at the end. Okay? So I didn't want to 
I guess do this whole thing. Well, I've run out of I've run out of space, so maybe I'll just copy this on the next slide and um, and finish it uh, so that we have it. Um, but that's the general advice. Uh, I guess it's only two points here or two um, uh, pieces of advice. But um, you know that, that that's sort of the most usually the place where I think people go wrong is that they're not actually doing one of these two things. Um, because aside from that, it's mostly just looking stuff up, you know, in the chart. It's kind of robotic otherwise, which is good in that, you know, you don't have to think a whole lot. So, um, okay. So, as I said, I wanted to do a few examples. I'll finish this one that I've started here and, um, and then maybe do one or two others um, just to hopefully have, have you see a few more. And it's true, you know, in a regular in-person class, um, you know, we'd probably do lots lots of examples um, uh, so try these you know try these feel free to stop the video um, and try these um, to see how you see how you stack up against uh, what we do and of course do the homework problems which are more examples of these and check the check the solutions as well um, so okay um, so let me finish this problem then um, which is a uh, sine of X okay so um, <clears throat> I'll just go on to the next slide and kind of repeat this so so I have sine of e to the x over x squared. Right. Yeah, okay. So um, <clears throat> so I'd say, so the first thing we said was I'm gonna try a chain rule, because it looks like, it looks like that, e, uh, e, it looks like that fraction is being plugged into the sine function. So I, I say, okay, that looks like a chain rule, and it uses everybody, so I'm happy about that. So I say, all right, and then I say, all right, the derivative of that's cosine, great. But again, here's where I say to myself, pause. Because again, I w what, what is it I'm trying to do? I'm trying to write down what's the derivative, right? Well, it's not in my chart. e to the x over x squared is not a famous one in my chart. Uh, so I undoubtedly need a rule of some sort in order to do this. So I say, all right, I, that's a fraction, so I probably need the quotient rule. So I put this on pause, and I really do mean probably draw yourself a little bit of a of a line here and I say pause because I'm going to do the quotient rule on e to the x over x squared. Okay? So I entirely start over or I start with a whole new problem. Now the quotient rule says I should have a top and a bottom, which I do. And so now also now now I'm very happy about this one because these are easy derivatives from my chart. And then the quotient rule says, if you want to do the derivative of a fraction, set up your four pieces. I did that. And now the uh, answer is uh, that it's uh, the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is e to the x, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom squared. OK, and I can do a little bit of simplifying. I guess it's kind of worth probably worth doing here. So here I've got the x squared e to the x. And I'll just rewrite that. Just put the 2x in front, maybe. And on the bottom there, that's x to the fourth, OK? Because it's x squared uh, squared. So uh, when you s have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply them. So it's x to the 2 times 2, which, is, of course, is 4. And then if you look at this for a second, everybody here has an x. So I could cancel one of those and one of those. OK, so I think I'm left just with x e to the x minus 2 e to the x over x cubed. OK, now that was just my side problem. That was just what's the derivative of that, right? Oh, OK, so that should go back to wherever I put my pause which was in this problem. I remember uh, five minutes ago, I was trying to do the chain rule, and I decided I need to come off to the side and do a side problem. I did the side problem. But the response, or the answer to the side problem, that needs to still go back into the original problem. So I'm going to put that back uh, right here, right? x e to the x minus 2 e to the x over x cubed. <coughs> OK. Now I've, I'm done with my side problem. I, you know, I don't want to put, a, I won't put a line through it, but you could if you wanted to, just to sort of say I'm done with that stuff on the right. But I'm not done with the stuff on the left because remember I was trying to do a chain rule, and I haven't actually finished it. Right? 
the only thing I've done now finally though is I have it all set up, right? I've got all four of my pieces now. So you still have to remember, okay, that I didn't actually complete the chain rule. In other words, I didn't actually fill in the result of the chain rule yet. I had put this on pause for a second, but now I'm back. So now I'm, the last step is I'm going to finally actually do the, do the chain rule and say, well, okay, what do I get? So you say, all right, the chain rule says I should get uh, f prime with g plugged in. So remember, it's this plugged in for x times g prime, which is this whole mess. Okay, but then the last thing we say to ourselves is, okay, but wait a minute, f prime of x is cosine. So I'm supposed to plug g in, right? I'm supposed to plug this in for x. So really, I get cosine of that times that. <laughs> okay, so this is not particularly nice to look at. But that would be the final answer. <clears throat> and there's absolutely no simplifying here because you can't do anything. Um, and this, remember, this, uh, this is attached to cosine. So it's not, I, even if I could try to cross stuff out, you can't because this is not multiplication. It's that times that, so to speak. In other words, this is attached to cosine. Okay. In any case, don't simplify ever. <laughs> I mean, unless I ask you to, just because don't. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is a good example. This is actually a really good example of a chain rule in conjunction with a quotient rule. You could have a chain rule in conjunction with a product rule, uh, and it could be in the other sort of order. I'll do maybe one more of that type. Um, where maybe you've got something like um, sine of x times cosine of x squared. <clears throat> okay, so um, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> if, when I look at this, I say, "All right, so who is this? What is this?" So using my own advice, I look and I try to say, "All right, what what rule or rules do I maybe need here?" So um, I've got, well, I don't have any fractions, right? I'm not dividing anything, so quotient rule is out. Um, well, I'm multi everything here is multiplied. I've got sine of x times cosine of x, which is then being squared. So I look at this, and again, I'm trying to be you guys for a second and think to myself, well, it's, everything is multiplied, so product rule sounds like that might be something in my future. But hopefully by now, maybe, maybe you've done enough chain rule problems to say, if I covered up sine, right, if that wasn't there, and I just had that, that's hopefully screaming to you as a sort of tr very basic chain rule question, because I've got cosine of x plugged into the x squared function. Or in other words, I'm you know, doing cosine first, and then I'm squaring. That kind of sounds like chain rule, right? Chain rule is uh, I do something and then I do another thing. So um, I don't know, right? In my, in my brain, I kind of look at this and I think I kind of see a product rule maybe in my future, but also maybe a chain rule. So again, especially when you think you might need more than one rule, um, or even if you don't, even if you think you only need one rule, uh, which will be the case for a number of problems, um, then all I really need to do here is just say, okay, well, what, what rule do I, what is this? Okay, well, this is a um, product. Certainly, it's a product of a couple of things. Now, if I just write down the chain rule, that would neglect sine of x. That would just be the cosine and then the squared. So I don't think I want to write down the chain rule as my first rule. Instead, maybe I'll say, all right, this kind of seems like a product of two things, which it is. Now, there's some question, perhaps, of how do I split this up into a product of two things when it kind of seems like it's maybe a product of three things or, or, or whatever. Um, and it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but I might just sort of say, well, it's sine of x times cosine of x squared. Because it is, right? It's sine of x, that's sort of the first thing. And then cosine of x squared is sort of the second thing. So it's, it's the product of these two things. Now again, I'll say, why is this right? Or why should you have hopefully done this as well? Is because this uses everything, right? This uses sine and it uses cosine of x squared. 
So if I wrote down the, just the, quote, just the uh, chain rule first, I would be neglecting sign. So I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to do this. And at least for a moment, I'm, this is easy. OK, but now I get to this and I say, OK, so I need to know the derivative of g. But here's where I'd say to myself, oh, OK, I don't know that one, right? I don't know cosine of x squared. That's not in my chart. So I say, all right, well, what is it? Ah, it, this looks like a chain rule, right? It's, a cla it's sort of a classic chain rule, right? I have one function plugged into another function. So I need to use, I need to come off to the side and say, oh, I need a chain rule right now because I need to be able to say what's the derivative of cosine of x squared, which I don't know what that is, right? I don't really know. I don't have that in my basic chart. So I say, all right, that looks like a chain rule. So I'm going to put my original problem on pause and come off to the side and say, I need to know what's the derivative of this guy. Okay, well, that looks like a chain rule. So I should maybe set up the chain rule over here using a new f and a new g. And hopefully this one's kind of a classic one, so it's not too tough. I've got cosine plugged into x in the x squared function, right? That's what this, that's what this is, OK? So I think, I'm, uh, I think that's the right setup. And each of these now is easy, right? So again, at some point, you're going to set up some rule where it's just sort of, oh, OK, these are all in my chart, or these are all easy. Um, and that's what. It's nice about this right process and the strategies. You say, all right, well, maybe I, I didn't. That didn't happen the first time when I tried to do the product rule. I ended up having to now do a side rule. Okay, but at least the side rule, everything turns out kind of nice, right? So um, anyway, you just have to sort of be patient, I guess. So all right, so I'm over here. I'm doing the chain rule. Um, so I've got my pieces set up. So now I should uh, fill in. So the chain rule says, if I do the chain rule derivative, I would get f prime with g plugged in times g prime. But I say, well, wait a minute. f prime is 2x. So if I plug cosine in, I would just get 2 cosine. And then times negative sine, which since I'm OCD, I'm going to put the negative in front and just say negative 2 cosine times sine. OK? So that's the result of my um, side problem, I guess. And then I say, where does that go? Oh, it goes back to wherever I paused, which is right here. So negative 2 cosine sine. And then I say, all right, well, I was trying to do the product rule a couple minutes ago when I had to put pause, when I had to you know, hit pause and come back. But I can unpause now, because I now know all four pieces of the product rule. So now I'm ready to my last step. I shouldn't circle this, I guess. I'll underline it since that's not the final answer. Um, uh, I'll, uh, right, so I'm ready to assemble my product rule result now. So my product rule says it should be the first times the derivative of the second, which is this whole monstrosity, plus the second times the derivative of the first. OK? And that's, that's fine. You can leave your answer like that. Um, there isn't a whole lot that you can cancel. It's true. This, this is really, if you, I mean, if you did simplify it, just, I'll just write down what you get. You could put these two signs together here and say you get uh, sine squared. And this is cosine cubed, right? Because it's cosine squared and then times another one. So that sounds like cubed. Um, okay, but it's fine. You don't have to. I, I couldn't cancel anything, right? I just sort of rewrote it. It, it, it does look a little nicer that way, but it, it's fine. You, do, you don't have to simplify something like that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, all right. And then maybe I'll just do one last one here. Um, <clears throat> so... Okay, so just to sort of do something a little uh, stranger or more strange, I guess. Um, uh, how about this? Um, so I look at this and I might s s pause for sure, you know, to think what the hell is this? Um, it's not a fraction, so it's no quotient rule. Um, 
it's not really multiplication, right? Because this is the ln, the natural log of this guy, of that. And then the middle, the inside piece is cosine of x squared. So I did just sort of say the of word twice, didn't I, right? It's the ln of a guy. And then that guy is the cosine of yet another guy. Okay. So of, right, when I'm sort of taking a function of something else, and blah, blah, that sounds like chain rule, right? That sounds like I'm composing it. Nowhere in there did I say times or multiply. So it's not a product rule. I think it's a chain rule. Okay, but I'm a little, but, but, all right, well, let, let, let's proceed. So for the chain rule, I'm asking that it's somebody plugged into somebody else. Well, Again, I'll try to be you guys for a second and say, well, w all right, I guess there's actually probably two ways to do this problem. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll do it sort of, well, there's two right ways to do it and one wrong way to do it, I guess. So uh, let me do the wrong way first. If I say, all right, well, what's happened? How do I do the chain rule? Well, the chain rule always says well, sort of, well, what's happening first? Well, I'm doing x squared first. And then that's getting plugged into cosine. But if I stopped here, again, I'd say to myself, but wait a minute, I completely neglected the ln. So that's wrong. Uh, well, yeah, wrong. I'll put that in air quotes. You can't see me right now. But uh, that's kind of wrong so, because I, don't, I neglected the ln. So I don't think that's how I want to start this problem. I'd like to use everything. Well, there's two ways to maybe use everything. I could stick with x squared for g and then make sure I use everybody in f or the other way around. So I'm going to choose to instead think, OK, if this is one function plugged into another big picture, it, the last thing I do is ln. So why don't I call that f? And then the first thing I do, even though this is sort of a two-stepper, is that. And it's true, right? I'm not wrong here. This is a perfectly legitimate setup for the chain rule in that this is ln of g of x, right? That, that's exactly what I've got up there at the top. So I think I'm good with that much at least. So this is a legit setup at the very least. Now I'm a little nervous about my g of x here. But all right, but I'm going to have no fear and proceed and see what happens. So the chain rule would say I need the derivative of each one. Well, that one's easy. But now in order to do the derivative of g, pause. Because that is not something that's just in my chart. That is something I probably need a rule for. And indeed, this is hopefully not a hard one, and it isn't. But this is the classic chain rule. I have one function, x squared, plugged into another function, cosine. So as much as this sounds kind of silly, I'm actually, this, so what is this whole problem? This is a chain rule inside of a chain rule. OK, which is a little bit ridiculous. Even I'll admit that. But um, OK, just for the sake of doing it, let's, let's do it. Um, so if I want to do the chain rule on cosine of x squared, I say, all right, that's x squared plugged into cosine. OK. So I do the derivative of each piece. Now each, at least each piece here is easy. OK, and I assemble this chain rule, I should say, because I have two chain rules going on here. This one's on pause on the left here. But the one on the right here, I can actually complete. So I get f prime with g plugged in times g prime. But then I say, oh, OK, but f prime is negative sine. So if I plug x squared in, I get negative sine of x squared times 2x. OK, and then this comes back to my pause wherever I stopped. And I'm just going to, because again, OCD, I'm going to put the 2x in front. OK, and now I'm ready to finally assemble my original chain rule, because I now at least have all four pieces. OK, so uh, for the chain rule here, I'd say, all right, so this should be f prime with g plugged in. Now my g over here is that, times g prime, which is this whole thing. Uh, so negative 2x sine of x squared. But I say, but wait a minute, f prime is 1 over x. So if I plug, again, this whole thing in for x, I would just get 1 over that. So I get 1 over cosine of x squared times negative 2x sine of x squared. 
Okay. Now, again, you could probably leave your answer like that. But if you want to be a super awesome, cool person, you might say, well, okay, so I have negative 2x. That, I've got that. And actually, sine over cosine, because it's of the same thing, right? x squared and x squared. That's just tangent. Sine over cosine is the same thing as tangent. So actually, it's just this, which actually isn't that terrible to look at. <clears throat> um, but it's okay. If you want to leave your answer like this, that's fine. Okay, so, um, you know, what you've sort of seen in action with these is, you know, what, these were all examples of what happens when you need more than one rule. Now, these are the worst case scenarios, right? In many cases, you just need one rule, use the rule, and get out of there. Um, but when you do need more than one, um, hopefully these examples will at least help steer you in terms of, you know, which do I do first, and how do I, you know, how do I put all this stuff together? Um, so don't let this freak you out. I'll probably only ask you maybe to do one or two problems that maybe need more than one rule um, uh, to do them. So, and in general, you know, it's probably the chain rule with one of the other two. Um, or in this last example, chain rule with chain rule. Um, but in general, it's, it's, it's because of the fact that the chain rule is the most prevalent one, it's usually that plus one other one. So. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, so that's the end of derivative, uh, derivatives, I guess, and doing derivatives. So, um, so do check out the homework problems. Do try, do try them, see how, um, see how you fare with them. And um, as always, you know, let me know if you have any, uh, any questions. So this is also the end of the material for the first exam. Um, and uh, I, I will be in contact via email um, to schedule and set that all up. Too. So, okay, so good luck with these.